Hey, this is Mark Karen. Our conflict is drug abuse, drug addiction, and drug distribution. Hello, my name is Kwame. My name is Mark. I grew up in a, and have lived my adult life on the west side of Chicago. Rough streets, neglected buildings, empty and abandoned, or boarded up and plastered in graffiti. My neighborhood was filled with families with a single parent in the house, usually just a maternal figure, but occasionally a mother and father, the latter of who was probably abusive and almost certainly an alcoholic or a drug abuser. The homes were modest by most measures, fenced yard with barking dogs, overgrown flower beds, and lawns that were intermittently mowed. Police presence was a regular occurrence. Police cars patrolling the neighborhoods was routine, and so were police investigations, murder, drug dealing, domestic violence, the gangs controlled sections of each neighborhood. They were the influencers. Flashy jewelry, expensive cars, wallets full of money. I became influenced. Soon I became one of them. Where my family had failed to guide me and nurture me, my gang family showed me the love I craved but lacked at home. It wasn't long before I had my own flashy jewelry, my own fancy car, and my own wallet full of money. I became the largest dealer of cocaine in the West Garfield neighborhood of Chicago. I didn't care about the users like Kwameek and the lives I was affecting in the West Garfield neighborhood. I just cared about the money, the status, the influence, and the power. Hello, my name is Police Inspector Kwameek James. I grew up in the upper north end of Chicago with white picket fences, luscious green grass. I grew up in a place where everyone said hey to one another. Kids played outside in their yards, and there are the sight of police were a rare occurrence. However, my perception of the world was changed in the, in the instance I became a cop in Chicago. My world was completely changed when I was sent to patrol the war zones of the east and south sides of, of the city. Every single day, there was nothing, nothing but drug offenses and raging gun battles. I was mortified by the constant death and destruction that plagued, the Chicago, plagued Chicago and when I found it found its cause, I thought I'd take the, take it head on. So I joined the Drug Intervention Task Force, where I led the charge on, on the war on drugs, busting up trap houses and putting dealers and users alike behind bars for as long as possible. Everyone on the force called me the super, called me the super cop. Turns out I am not so super at, after all. I went to stop an armed subject wreaking havoc in the Narrows. I kicked in his door and got nothing but buckshot for my troubles. Months of recovering from that shot, which led to months of use of prescription drugs, which led to my addiction, my descent into darkness. My body required the stuff at every moment during work, when I was with my kids, and even dur during my dreams. It was horrible. Eventually the pills couldn't get me high, and I turned to people like Mark, who supplied me with the heavy stuff, such as heroin. Being the largest dealer in my neighborhood, wasn't enough. I wanted more, so I pushed in the East Garfield Park neighborhood across Hamlin Avenue. I had my runners move in and out of East Garfield Park, gaining access to the drug trade and a rival gang territory. With my power and influence growing and my drug habit becoming out of control, I became brazen and erratic. One night, high on cocaine and filled with alcohol, I grabbed my homeboy and drove through the East, Park, East Garfield Park, windows down, with the music from NWA blaring out of my JBL car speakers. I wasn't afraid of what the rival gang might do to me. First time through the neighborhood, not a single person noticed. There were a few people out in the streets, but they didn't even turn their heads. Second time through the neighborhood, I noticed a couple of rival gang members walking out their front door onto the driveway. I didn't even stop to think, put the car in park, grabbed my gun, and stepped out of the car yelling at them to get back into the house. What happened next happened fast. Shots pierced the quiet night, racing through the calm air. All I can remember was the noise and the pain. I'd been hit with two bullets in the left bicep and shoulder. Then I heard screaming from the house in my car. Somehow I struggled toward the car and found shelter from the hail of bullets. Sirens blared. I woke up the next morning in the hospital. I was told I came within minutes of dying. I spent days in the hospital recovering, and it was here that I learned of Cure Violence, a national anti-violence program. Cure violence uses techniques and approaches similar to disease control strategies to detect and interrupt conflicts, identifying and treating the highest risk individuals and changing social norms. I work as a violence interrupter and work in the community to prevent retaliation and mediate ongoing gang conflict so that violence doesn't escalate. 
This program has been adopted successfully in cities such as New York, New Orleans, Juarez, Mexico, and Cape Town, South Africa. We treat violent behavior through a medical lens, saving thousands of lives and reducing violence in communities across America and countries around the world. At, at the time, I didn't care. I didn't care. I, the world, I didn't care about the world. I was carefree. I felt free. I, was help, I felt happy. And so finally, my addiction affected my marriage, my career. Then I ran out of money and started doing favors for my drug pushing friend, buddies. Only a small, only small stuff at first, letting them go here and there with dime bags rather than busting them like I usually would. Then they wanted me to start tip, tipping them off to raids and uh, police action, which helped them continue their evil enterprise. I had become the, a member of the very thing I sought to destroy. I was so ashamed. So I, I turned myself into IAB, who put me in rehab and suspended me from do, active duty. And now I am getting my life back, back on track. Because of it, I am even back in the fight against the drugs. However, with a slight twist rather than looking at drug, drug addicts with disgust and resentment as I usually did, I see them as casualties in the long reigning war. I see them as failures because we, their protectors, have failed to protect them from this curse. So I've decided to start a program to help people back to the sense of normalcy, a sense of themselves. I called it First Step, and it's, it is working for a lot of people, especially when they hear my story and how even the law can fail sometimes and how they themselves can get back into good grace.